Hi, I'm Travis Wood from Spec Rescue International. Today on the Spec Show, we're going to go over some hammer drills. As you can see, I've got three different hammer drills laid out here. Uh, two are DeWalt's, one is a, a Hilti. Um, what's important is you become familiar with what you have in your own cache, but there's some subtle differences between the two that I'm gonna go over right now. So this is the Hilti TE80, a uh, great um, larger sized hammer drill. Um, with, this, with this particular one, we've got the selector switch right here. That gives you your get up juice. We've also got a trigger lock. However, in USAR work, we don't ever wanna use the trigger locks. We got a, uh, an impact selector down here, which will give you either a heavy hit or a light hit, depending on the material you're going through and the application. Um, and then we've got the selector right here to go from either hammer drill function or chipper only, depending on your, uh, your, your function there. Moving on down, we've got the, uh, the handle here. You can, you can turn it, rotate it, put it in the, in the position of function. Um, what's important is that we always keep two hands on this tool at all times. This does have an internal uh, torque control in it, but if you don't have your hand, two hands on the tool, it won't engage that. As with any of these tools, most of them also have an internal on-off switch. So unless you are actually applying force, you won't actually get, actually get the, uh, the hammer function. Next, I'll go over to a, a little bit smaller of a hammer drill. This is the DeWalt, but also um, is very effective depending on your application. Just like the Hilti, on-off switch back here. Selector switch up here. It's got the same hammer drill or a chipper only function. And then you also have the ability to adjust the handle and move it in the, in the position you need. With both of these hammer drills, they're set up for SDS Max. An easy way to identify uh, an SDS Max tool is most of them have a collar and the collar will spring down. Okay? To insert the tool, you simply drop it in the end. While applying downward force, just rotate it and it'll drop in. Okay? The next thing I want to do is check the, the bit to make sure it's seated properly and locked in. Obviously set up for a hammer drill operation. I want to make sure that I'm in actually hammer drill. When I'm ready to, to switch from a hammer drill operation to a chipping operation, I simply pull down on the collar, grab the bit, slide the chipper drill, chipper bit in, and lock it into place. Okay. One of the benefits of SDS Max is I have the ability to switch the selector to a, to a neutral roll, if you will, and then I can orient the chisel bit in whatever direction I need it to work. With the DeWalt, it's set up the same as SDS Max. You can see the collar. Next, I'm gonna go over a different bit con uh, configuration that you might find in your cache. This is called spline drive or round hex. For the spline drive, simply drop it in the tool, push your indentation, drop it back, and then check it to make sure you're locked. When you're ready to switch over to a chipper only function, Release the pin, pull the bit out. With this guy, it's very important that you line up the indentation with the pin side. Only goes in one way. Drop it in, set your pin, lock it. Lock it, check to make sure you're in. Unlike the SDS Max I just showed you, this has to be oriented with the pin, and that's the only direction that the chipper can go in, so you don't have the ability to rotate it. This little Milwaukee down here, it's a chipper only. If you look at the tool, I don't have any kind of a selector switch that would allow me to go into the rotary hammer function, so this one is set up as a chipper only. However, it does take the same round hex as the, uh, as the hammer drill that I just showed you. Operates exactly the same. Push your pin, orient your slot with the pin, drop it in, lock it back, and then check it. Lastly, I just wanted to show you a, uh, a common mistake that happens when selecting, uh, when selecting bits for the right tool. 
you can see I have two different style bits here, square hex and round hex. You can see that the indentations line up, the diameter is the same. Either will go into either tool. The difference is the length of the impact area. So a common mistake is grabbing the wrong bit for the wrong tool. This, this square hex will actually go into the tool. It will lock in. You will think you're good, but as I showed you before, the impact area is too short, so you won't actually have the hammer function when you go to use it. For the spec show, I'm Travis Wood. Thank you very much.